The Atlas organization founder and author of the upcoming book, The Decisive Decade, Jonathan Ward, is here. Jonathan, it is great to see you. Thanks very much for being here this weekend. I want to start off with this uh, upset in the Senate Finance Committee over these companies using slave labor in the Xinjiang region of China. Hi, Maria. Well, I think what we're going to find, I mean, people think of the genocide in Xinjiang and the forced labor concerns as being related to, um, let's say, textiles or clothing or those sorts of things. But in fact, it's so much more extensive than that. It's deeply a part of China's industrial base. And that's what this uh, report has, has pointed out. And it's found its way to the Senate. And I think we're going to see a big turning point in 2023 when it comes to U.S. corporations in China. I mean, that now is, uh, has the full attention of Congress. Um, I think it's the conversation um, in, in America, among the American people, is going to change a lot about what our companies are doing over there. So, you know, this this report has shown, I think, above all, the relationship between the big steel makers and um, the genocide in Xinjiang and forced labor. So things like Baowu Steel, which General Motors called supplier of the year seven times between 2006 and 2020, as the report points out, you know, other um, elements like uh, tires, aluminum, glass, electronics, batteries, which is going to be a big strategic issue, copper, yeah. um, you know, you name it. So, so it's the industrial base. It's not just textiles. It's not just clothing. It's the entire industrial base. And to see companies like General Motors and Tesla, which have really bought into China so deeply, I mean, my right. opinion is that we're going to lose some of these companies in the 2020s. I mean, something like General Motors, which sells more more cars in China than it does in the United States, um, at a certain point, they're they're going to need a strategy to to de-risk. It's like being at the beginning of Cold War One, and your biggest client is the USSR. I mean, tell me how that wow. plays out. Yeah, I mean, it's a great point. And this is just one part of a China story that is quite troubling for America and the rest of the world. We know that the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, wants to overtake the United States as the number one superpower. So why are so many companies funding the expansion of the CCP? Will the CCP end up turning the guns on America? I spoke with the incoming uh, chairman of the uh, China Select Committee, Mike Gallagher, on this program last weekend. Watch this. Defending the country from Chinese Communist Party aggression should be a bipartisan thing. So how do we do that? Beyond explaining the stakes to the American people, well, a key part of that strategy has to be reducing our economic dependency on China and making sure that U.S. dollars aren't financing China's military modernization or financing genocide in Xinjiang province. And that was Mike Gallagher on this program a few weeks ago. But, Jonathan, some companies are beginning to wake up to the dangers of doing business in China. You've got Citigroup pulling out its uh, consumer banking operations in China. Uh, you've certainly got a lot in the news about China's bad behavior, from the provocations against Taiwan to the continued intellectual property theft of American corporations. Where is this going? Right, not to mention naval exercises with Russia this week. Um, so this is all ongoing. I mean, these are our strategic enemies, Russia and China. They're working together. They know that. Anyone that really has a clue about this understands that. And our companies have got to stop fighting this. That's the main thing. It's how we win or lose. It's going to take place in the corporate sector. We're going to have to go after Chinese corporates in the strategic industries, and we're going to have to get our companies out so that we're not building their industrial base. So all the key pieces of this, I mean, it's the, the industries that make this country um, powerful. You know, technology, finance, um, you know, certainly our industrial base. I mean, we need to rebuild that. That's the missing piece. Um, and we're going to need to get our companies back here and on the right side of history. That's, I think, one of the most important elements to this. You can't have deterrence in the long term if you don't win the economic competition. So we have to focus on that. That means American corporations. And it also means Wall Street. I mean, right now, people are excited about the opening. Um, post-COVID, post-zero COVID. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, people that want to sort of capture, let's say, a rebound in China stocks. I mean, these are not obviously good long-term bets, and people are investing against the U.S. national interest. So we have to stop that. I expect to see much more um, scrutiny of Wall Street um, in Congress and in government uh, in the year ahead. And it's just something that has to come. We need our bankers on our side, not playing both sides. Yeah, it's a great point. And all the while, you have surveillance programs from the CCP increasing all over America, Jonathan. There are even police stations across the world. Why do we have a CCP police station right here in New York? And the growing threat of TikTok. Now some universities are moving to block TikTok access on campus uh, devices and Wi-Fi networks. The House has banned TikTok on their devices in the omnibus bill for good reason. And we're learning that 
Forbes is telling us they're reporting that uh, TikTok parent company ByteDance was tracking Forbes journalists. We don't know how many people the CCP are, is tracking and why. Well, ByteDance is one of the companies that we're going to have to, uh, you know, give the Huawei treatment to. I mean, you're going to have to take down ByteDance, uh, make sure that it's not, um, you know, I mean, TikTok is, is is obviously the element that we're dealing with on the front end, but the parent company is, is a major, I, um, excuse me, AI uh, capable company that's producing all of that sort of advantage that's going to ultimately wind up um, supporting the Communist Party's strategic initiative. So I think some of the bigger companies that we have to go after um, are still ones that, that people want to invest in. You take things like Alibaba and Tencent, which are aligned with the party. I mean, they're known to be involved in, um, you know, the, the sort of uh, human rights atrocities and things of that nature. So I think there's a long list of Chinese corporations, particularly SASAC corporations, the state-owned enterprises. Um, you know, that's where we're headed, I think, is towards a form of economic warfare um, in the midst of a strategic decoupling that's unavoidable. I mean, let's not forget they have military goals um, that are very dangerous to the United States. That includes preparing, um, you know, their military for combat with us. So, so you can't, you know, talk your way out of this problem. We just have to take action now. Wow. And you've been talking about this for so long, speaking to corporations as well. Jonathan, thanks very much for your leadership on the subject. We will continue to follow your work. Jonathan Ward joining us. Thank you, sir.